What is up, guys? It is Marcus from Perspective Sports, and today we'll be covering the NFC portion of my 2018-2019 NFL season prediction series. The next video after this will be the playoffs, and the video before this was the AFC, so be sure to go check that out. I expect this conference to be very competitive. This might be the best conference or the most talented conference I've seen in my lifetime. I'm only 19, but this... I feel like this one's going to be for the ages. I legitimately see eight to ten teams competing for six playoff spots. And I've already, again, I've already done my AFC predictions. Make sure you go check that video out. The next video will be the playoffs. But without further ado, let's dive right into it with the NFC East. And I have the Philadelphia Eagles continuing their dominance because this team, after winning the Super Bowl, didn't get complacent. They went out and got Michael Bennett from the Seattle Seahawks, fresh over 25 tackle, eight and a half sack season. They signed Haloti Nada, who's coming off an injury with something to prove. Signed Mike Wallace, adding to their solid receiving core. Traded for Daryl Worry, who had two picks, 49 tackles, and a sack last season. This team will see MVP candidate Carson Wentz, who would have won MVP if he didn't get hurt, in my opinion, be back early to mid season. But then again, there's no rush because they have Nick Foles, who's proven he can keep that ship afloat. Next, I have the New York Giants coming in at 8-8, eight and eight, and this team couldn't catch a break last season, losing essentially their entire receiving core, had no run game, a bad offensive line, and the defense played way too much last season. The odds of that happening again are very low. Now they have Odell Beckham Jr., Sterling Shepard, finally back off injury. They have a high-level left tackle in Nate Solder. They have a very good dual at all running back in Saquon Barkley who will take a majority of the snaps. And they have Jonathan Stewart, another productive back. Mix that in with an exceptional defense. Even though they did lose Jason Pierre-Paul, they still have a defense with no significant weakness. Coming in at third, we have the Washington Redskins who are actually tied with the Dallas Cowboys who I believe they upgraded at quarterback for a cheaper price. Alex Smith, when you put him next to Kirk Cousins, there's nothing Kirk can do that Alex can't, if not do more efficiently Alex Smith has not thrown more than eight interceptions in a season in the last seven seasons. Now you give him a solid old line led by Trent Williams and Brandon Sheriff. Give him a speech to like Paul Richardson on the outside, Jordan Reed at tight end. The problem is the running back position. They don't have any running backs, and that's what's going to hold this team back. It's not going to be Alex Smith. The defense is also a question. They may have the worst run defense in football. They allowed over 134 yards per game last year. They tried to address the issue by drafting Deron Payne out of Alabama, which was a good pick. But I'm not sure they did enough to keep that from holding this team back again this year. Mix the bad run defense with the lack of a run game. And running is going to be what holds this team back. And finally, we have the Dallas Cowboys coming in last. Well, technically third. They're tied with the Redskins to 7-9. And, and I have this happening for a few reasons. Their receiving core is lackluster. Yes, they have Allen Hearns, Terrence Williams, but not much else. Tavon Austin had 22 targets last year on the number one offense in the league, and he's slated to be their starter. There's no depth at that position. And there'll be another run heavy, actually, I, I would say borderline, but there'll be a one-dimensional offense, and that's a cause of concern for me. Just like with the Jacksonville Jaguars, if you watch my AFC prediction video, you can't win in today's football running 51, 52, 53% of the time. Yes, they have a very good front seven. I mean, I love DeMarcus Lawrence, Boise State all the way. They have starting linebackers that I like, but that secondary is still questionable. And you're not going to win a lot of football games with just a front seven in a run game. This isn't the 70s. This isn't the 80s. You got to be able to throw the ball, and you got to be able to stop the other team from throwing the ball. The Cowboys can't do either. Just like the run game is going to kill the Redskins, the pass game is going to kill the Cowboys. Moving on to the NFC North, and I think this would be a tight battle between the Green Bay Packers and the Minnesota Vikings. And I have the Packers winning the division by one game for this reason. Aaron Rodgers is back. Aaron Rodgers has even more weapons than usual. They added Jimmy Graham and Mercedes Lewis, giving Rodgers even more targets. The running game will be back this year. They have Aaron Jones, Ty Montgomery, and Jamal Williams. That'll be an efficient committee-style system. And I'm really satisfied with the amount of energy they put into their defense. Drafting Jair Alexander, stealing Josh Jackson, signing Jamal Williams to beef up the secondary, signing Muhammad Sanu to put with Mike Daniels and Kenny Clark, drafting Oren Burks, to put in a good rotation with the NFL's tie. Well, he's tied. I call him the NFL's leading tackler, Blake Martinez, Clay Matthews with a chip on his shoulder on that contract year, and Nick Perry. I think this Packers defense, and am I really about to say this? I can't remember the last time I thought this, let alone said it. This Packers defense is going to surprise a lot of people and mix that with this high-powered offense. They're going to be a very dangerous team. 
coming in second. Yes, I have the Minnesota Vikings. Yes, they signed Kirk Cousins. Yes, they upgraded a quarterback, but they will take a step back. They are playing a brutal first place schedule. Playing New England in Seattle in the winter on the road. They'll be at Philadelphia, at the Rams. When you look at their toughest games, they're going to be on the road in hostile crowds. Heck, add Green Bay to that. Yeah, they get a home game against them, but nonetheless, you still got to go to Green Bay to play. And Minnesota is going to take a step back. It's not going to be a massive step back, out of the playoff step back, but it's going to be a step back. Next, we have the Detroit Lions, who I don't think will be able to make the playoffs because just like everybody else in the NFC North, they have a tough schedule. The only thing is, they don't have the roster to stay with that tough schedule. And yes, they made solid offseason moves. Signing Deshaun Shedd, LeGarrette Blunt, Luke Wilson. The Lions are going to be a tough out. But I don't see them being able to even get an above positive record in the division when you play Green Bay, Minnesota. And then the Bears are emerging as a very good young team. So the Lions are in kind of a difficult spot of being a good team, but not good enough to contend for a playoff spot with that schedule. And speaking of the Bears, they have the potential to pull off a few upsets like they did last year. Go ask the Steelers. Go ask the Panthers. No one expects them to be contenders for the playoffs, and they're definitely not a playoff contending team, but they're a team you cannot overlook. Mitchell Trubisky is entering his second year. He has Allen Robinson looking for redemption. Taylor Gabriel, speed to receiver who can take the top off the defense. Josh Howard, Tariq Cohen. Mix that with a young, aggressive defense that can cause trouble for opposing QB. Just go ask Cam Newton. This Bears defense has a lot of potential. And this Bears team, excuse me, has a lot of potential to pull off some upsets. Move on to the NFC South, where I have the Atlanta Falcons reclaiming their number one spot. Because when you look at Atlanta, this team has no glaring weaknesses. Let's start with their defense. The defense is fast. The defense is aggressive. They're ranked 8th in opponent's yards per game allowed. ninth in rushing yards per game allowed. 13th in passing yards per game allowed. And... It's only going to get better. This team is starting to mature, starting to come into their own. Now mix that with an explosive offense that we already knew was there, and they just added Calvin Ridley. This is basically an unchanged offense that put up over 357 yards per game last season, and they're going to be a very tough team to beat, with, especially with Calvin Ridley on the roster now. The Falcons are going to be a very tough out. Now let's talk about the New Orleans Saints who are coming off a heartbreaking defeat in the playoffs but will be front and center vying for the wild card spot. The Saints offense will be without Mark Ingram which will hurt them only on because what made that run game so explosive was the one-two punch combo of him and Alvin Kamara. Mixed that with Drew Brees, Michael Thomas, Ted Ginn, etc. They had an almost unstoppable offense and their defense shocked everyone with how well they played last year and it's going to be very interesting to see if they can sustain that level of play. Coming in third we have the Carolina Panthers and this team is good but once you stack them up against the Saints and Falcons it's hard to see a world where they finish above either one of them because they've made moves signing Don Terry Poe, CJ Anderson, drafting DJ Moore but that's not enough to put you over the hump in this division and that's why you're going to be stuck at third hard to get over 500 good team hell of a division that's all i can really say for the panthers and finishing the last is the tampa bay buccaneers i don't see them doing much of anything Jameis winston will be suspended for the first three games even when he plays he's not going to do much yes they've made one move worthy of talking about signing jason pierre paul pairing him with gerald mccoy but one player in a loaded division isn't going to do anything for you Finally, we have the NFC West, and the Los Angeles Rams will be really good if. Now, I say if because they made a lot of big moves. They acquired Akib to leave, Marcus Peters, and Dominican Sue. But they also acquired a lot of personality. Marcus Peters throws flags in the stands when he gets upset and doesn't get his way. Akib to leave tries to snatch chains. And Dominican Sue has a history of dirty plays. This could all go really right for the Rams or explode in their face. Now I'm going to look at the optimistic side and say this is going to go right. And if this does go right, this star-studded team with their number one offense in the NFL last year, yes, they lost Sammy Watkins, but they brought in Brandon Cooks. So there's no real production loss. And they got a guy who can take the top off the defense while Cooper Cup and Robert Woods, who can also take the top off the defense, can get open in the coverage. Their defensive line with the Namagasu, Michael Brockers, Aaron Donald, the secondary of Marcus Peters, Akeem Tlaib, LaMarcus Joyner, Sam Shields. This team, if all goes right, is going to be 
dangerous. I haven't even mentioned Derek Goff. I haven't even mentioned Todd Gurley. I haven't even mentioned Wade Phillips. I haven't even mentioned John McVay. This team is going to be a hell of a team. Next, I have the San Francisco 49ers. And yes, I don't care what anyone says. They will be a viable team with Jimmy Garoppolo at the helm. They've built a competent O-line. Pierre Garçon and Marcus Good went outside. Yes, their one game is questionable, but the defense added Richard Sherman to be the number one corner. They have a D-line of Solomon Thomas, DeForest Buckner, and Reuben Foster. They have Malcolm Smith at the linebacker position. This team is going to be good. Not great, but this team is going to be good. Coming in at third, the Seattle Seahawks will unfortunately see their dominance come to an abrupt end. Yes, you can say the abrupt end was last year, but they had a slither of hope. Now, Michael Bennett's gone. Richard Sherman's gone. Earl Thomas wants out. The Seahawks era is now a part of the past. And as hard as that is to say with Russell Wilson just entering his prime, this one's over. And coming in last, we have the Arizona Cardinals who did a, who have a really solid veteran team, but they don't have an O-line. They don't have a D-line. They're potentially going to have to start a rookie quarterback in Josh Rosen. And it'll be a tough... It's tough to see the Cardinals getting anything going this year, which means they're going to lose a lot of games. Even games they should win, I see them losing. But that's that for you. Now let's take a look at the NFC playoffs, as I've done in the AFC. Make sure you go watch that video. In first place, we have the Philadelphia Eagles at 12-4. and four. Number two, we have the Atlanta Falcons at 12-4. and four. Number three, we have the Los Angeles Rams at 12-4. and four. And number four, we have the Green Bay Packers at 11-5. And, and number five, we have the Minnesota Vikings at 10-6. And, and at number six, we have the San Francisco 49ers at 10-6, and six, meaning the 10-6 and six New Orleans Saints will not be in the playoffs, which is hard to say because you definitely want to see Drew Brees in the playoffs. You definitely want to see... Marcus Lattimore and those guys in the playoffs, Sean Payton. But it's just not going to happen according to my predictions. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. I look forward to reading them. I'll see you there.